Hello and thank you for joining us today here on MIDI Supplies Technical Support Channel. Uh, today we're going to be discussing just a few uh, things that, that may potentially happen with your machine and cause it to not run properly. Uh, first, we're going to start out with uh, the motor might be humming when you turn it on. This is just a brief demonstration to show you what might be happening in your particular case. 90% of the time what I've come to learn from my customers is that through transporting the machine, through uh, the delivery process, through carrying it from your wash parlor to the barn, uh, these have potential for this housing to slip down and make contact with the cylinder. Uh, most of the time this can be remedied by loosening these four bolts and sliding the housing upwards to increase the clearance between the cylinder and the housing. One of the next problems that we face uh, on a regular basis are motors running at half speed, low power, or they like to stall out when they try to build up pressure. Um, a common occurrence for this are uh, faulty capacitors. Uh, there are a number of di different issues that can cause this, um, such as uh, too high of a vacuum pressure, but most, uh, most often than not, it's gonna be a capacitor issue. Uh, so we're gonna show you a quick way to test this. Uh, using a multimeter. The multimeter that we use here at my is a Southwire 21530T. Uh, we'll provide a link to this uh, on Amazon in the description. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the capacitance. Uh, another term would be the microfarads of these capacitors. And so what we're gonna do is set our meter to this symbol here, and we are going to change our range to microfarads. A quick way that we can test these without having to disassemble too much of the motor, first and foremost, we wanna remove the switch panel cover that encloses the two capacitors for the machine. Uh, to test this the most simple way, in most, uh, most machines, especially the newer ones, you'll have a single red wire coming from the motor. We'll just wanna disconnect that from the blue junction. To do so, all you'll need is a small flathead screwdriver. From here, we can take our black and red contacts, one of which will go to the point on the switch that has one wire from each capacitor. And the other one we're gonna use to make contact with the blue junction. Doing so will cause the multimeter to read the combined capacitance. Now you may notice that it may take a minute to register, but as you can see, we're at 106.1 microfarads. The capacitors that we're using are a 30 and a 75, and a combination of the two is 105. Your capacitors may read slightly different. These do have a plus or minus 5% uh, specification. So if they're a little bit above or a little bit below, they are just fine. So a question you may have is, how do I know if my capacitor is bad? So with the testing that we just completed, uh, the range that we wanna be within is, if we measure individually, we are, our uh, 75 microfarad capacitor should be no less than 71.43 microfarads and no higher than 78.75 microfarads. For the 30 microfarad capacitors, we don't wanna be below 33.3 or above 36.75. If your particular machine has 50 microfarad capacitors, your minimum rating is 47.6 and the maximum needs to be 52 and a half. Number three in our list of common problems that we notice is uh, when you turn on your machine, nothing happens. There's no hum, there's no power, uh, there's just there's no indication that it has power at all. Um, first, that first thing that we wanna do absolutely is gonna be 
check every connection. Make sure that you check that your machine is in fact plugged in, uh, in case maybe you transported it since the last time you used it. Next would be to open your switch box and ensure that all your connections are securely fastened. If your cord is plugged in and all your connections are secure, uh, then we would want to start next with the switch to see if that might be our cause for concern. Um, to do this, we have two different switch styles that we can test to know if these are or are not the problem. Uh, now, you'll notice that one that I have is orange. This is going to be the most common. This is what usually comes uh, from the factory on each machine. And what I have here is blue. These tend to be the replacements that we send out um, if you need a new switch. Uh, both work pretty much identical. The only thing that changes um, are the, lo the, the, the orientation of the wires. Now to test them, it will be the same as long as you have the numbers still on the side. So on the orange switch, in order to test this, we will need to test in ohms to make sure that we have continuity. Continuity just ensures that we have contact when the switch is turned on. Now to do so, we want our machine unplugged so we don't get electrocuted. And we can test for continuity by turning the switch to the on position. And with the multimeter on the ohms position, the symbol for this kind of looks like an O with little feet at the bottom. Now to test this, we'll take one of our leads and we'll want to touch position one and our next lead to touch position two. As you can hear, my uh, multimeter beeps confirming that there is continuity between both of these points. Now to test the other side, positions three and four, we're gonna do the same thing. One prong on position four, one prong on position three. And again, you'll notice that I get a consistent beeping indicating that I have continuity in my switch. If you notice that only one side uh, measures continuity and the other side measures nothing, then that, that means that we potentially have a bad switch. Since we showed the orange switch, we're gonna go ahead and show how to test for continuity in the blue switch. So again, with power disconnected, we're going to have the, the, uh, the toggle switch turned to the on position. And again, we are going to test first positions one and two. Positions one and two are indicated by the open side of this box here. So up top will be position two on the top right. And then position one, the box is open facing up here to the top left. And what we'll do again, one prong to the screw on one side, one prong to the screw on the other. Oh, my machine is off. <laughs> and so you'll see again, when I make contact with the switch turned on, we have continuity. Now this number here indicates resistance. The lower it is, the less resistance it has. If you have a very high number, that might indicate that we also have a problem. Now again, testing our final position, positions three and four. So that's position four with the open side facing down. Position three with the open side facing down. Once again, we measure continuity. We get the continuous beeping. Now, multimeters are different, so not all of them may beep. You may just have to go based on the number that it's showing. Um, again, the lower the number, the less resistance you have. Um, but again, that will show us if we have a good or a bad switch. One of the final things that we'll be covering is the power cord. Now over time, these get bent, they get run over, stepped on, um, sometimes even sliced, just depending upon your current situation. Uh, but there are those circumstances where the cords can develop shorts. Now we do have a way that we can test these without having power applied to them to make sure that you are getting continuity all the way to your switch. Um, to do this, again, we'll be using the ohms setting on our multimeter. And again, mine will be indicating that 
we have continuity. And to do this, what I like to do is use the hole on one of the pins and simply hold the prong in place. And I'll go to my switch and find my white and black. Now, sometimes yours might be blue or brown um, and we might not necessarily know which side the wire is uh, associated with. But what I can do is test on the white side, and if I don't get a reading there, I'm going to test the black wire. So as you can see, this prong has continuity to my black wire. So that indicates that we have full contact. Now, again, we'll do the same thing just on the other side. And now that we have continuity, we know that we just need to rotate to the other side. So now we'll be using the white wire. And once again, when I make contact, we know that the power cord has continuity. The third and final one that we'll check is our ground. This one might be a little bit more difficult. We just keep one of the prongs uh, making contact with it. And then we'll touch, you'll see in your box that there is a screw uh, holding some some wire the green wire to the body of the, the motor and we'll just touch that screw and as you can see we have continuity with our ground so we know that the cord is good while we do allow uh, or while our machines are capable of using and utilizing an extension cord to be used for uh, more portability more flexibility uh, with your milking setup. We do uh, recommend certain types of cords depending on the length that you need to go. Um, so please consult our diagram. We can attach a link of that below in the description uh, for recommended cords in the gauge sizes. We do have customers call in quite frequently with a motor that is stalling out and uh, a lot of times it seems to be the extension cord. Now, a lot of cords might be rated to a certain extent uh, for a certain distance, but the amperage is what needs to be carried out to the end of the machine or to the end of the cord. Um, and they might last for a little while, but breakdown, heat, just overall wear and tear can cause these to not be able to carry the current as well anymore. So again, please consult our diagram for recommendations on extension cords. So this will conclude today's troubleshootings uh, for, for this video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, we can be reached at 912-339-0173. Our hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, if you cannot get a hold of us, uh, just please leave a voicemail. We will try to get back to you in a timely manner. Um, of course, if you reach us through the weekend, uh, we do apologize, um, but we will try to get back with you on Monday as quickly as possible. Uh, thank you for choosing MIDI Supply.